Hey everybody, welcome back to the basement. Today's video is going to be all the goodies that me and my lady got at the Amherst Railway Show for 2017. Yeah, we did. So right off the bat, I'll just uh, get the t-shirts out of the way. Um, I actually bought three t-shirts, um, but the old lady ran off with one of them. It's a uh, New Haven uh, DL109 shirt, and uh, I can't show you that, so we'll move on. Um, I got a mess happening here already. I got a uh, Boston and Maine long sleeve t-shirt, and it says, oh, hang on, and it says, Focus. Focus. Work with me here. Thank you, says Boston and Maine on the long sleeve. So that's a winner for me because I like long sleeve shirts. Um, also, I, I bought this shirt um, because I'm a fan of the Conrail uh, Brown, the Hopper Cars, Box Cars, etc., and uh, this is a t-shirt. I thought that this was just a t-shirt with the uh, Conrail can opener in the front. And to my pleasant surprise, it actually has stuff on the back too, which I will try my best to display. Set, uh, this number is actually a four bay hopper. Um, I found it, I looked it up and I, on Google and I found a picture of it. And uh, it's got this cool... Conrail Twitty, where am I here? Sorry, this is going to be awful. I got the, uh, it's got the little Conrail Twitty chalk tag on it. I thought that was cool. It's the little load limit, load weight. Sorry, this is going to be a terrible video, just like all my other ones. Load limit, load weight, there you go. Yeah, we did. And, of course, I destroyed... My Providence and Worcester hat, so I went over to uh, Yelzma Jackets and Graphics and whatnot, and uh, Denny hooked me up with a hat for uh, 10 bucks, which is pretty good. I guess these are discontinued now with the rope on them, but uh, I love that kind. Needed a new hat. Um, Alright, so next we'll do the small stuff. Um, my intention is to have a small trailer park on my layout, and uh, I just found an Another City Classics um, mobile home kit. Probably going to try to have like five or seven of these. A nice odd amount. And then I'll uh, get the trailer park up in Canada going on. Um, I also, um, I'm kind of like, um, I like Penn Central, but I'm more a fan of the transition era where Conrail had a lot of patched out Penn Central stuff. So I bought a decal sheet. Or a decal sheet, depending on where you're from. And you can't see it, because it's all white. But I bought a uh, just a quick stencil sheet, just to try some uh, water slide graphics. This is one of the things... Yeah, you're never... Oh, maybe. Yeah, you can barely see. These are from uh, Mask Island decals. Um, no, you can't see that. I apologize. Um... But it's meant for a 40-foot uh, X43C boxcar, but I just wanted to experiment with weathering over uh, old liveries and stuff. So I figured, you know, that was a good cheap uh, adventure. And also, I got a uh, Conrail caboose that's still in its uh, Penn Central green. Fire this out of the box. I'm going to do a run-by of all of the cars afterwards anyways. But... Um, these Ather and Ready to Runs actually aren't too bad. It's got metal wheels on it, of course, and semi-decent sprung couplers. So I don't know if these are actually KDs or not, but yeah, something I couldn't live without because it's that transition era that I love, and I'm I like the green too. Um, also from Tangent, I picked up one of their 4180 air slide covered hoppers. Um. I'm trying to buy rolling stock with ACI tags already on them, if possible, um, because that's kind of the era that I'm going for. Like, 1979 is, like, the perfect year, in my opinion, for model railroading, but I'll do, like, 10 years before and 10 years after, give or take. I don't know. It's kind of freelance. I, I really like 
a lot of stuff. So I tried not to corner myself in. Um, so first thing right off the bat, I'm noticing with this tangent car, as you can see, the roof block has actually buckled. Okay, just making sure you can see that. Um, I mean, it's highly detailed. I mean, there's... Where am I here? There's no questioning that this is a really nice car. Paint's nice. Decals are crisp. And there's a lot a lot more, you know, pertinent informations around on the car that you don't usually get on a typical ready-to-run car. Um, this right here... I think the roof lock is metal. Yeah, that's... Uh, these are expensive cars, so I kind of don't, I kind of can't really give them a little leeway on this. You know, I expect that from a old, you know, cheap car or whatever. But these uh, actually, I kind of expected to just be perfect right out of the box. But that's really the only discrepancy that I can find. Um, I don't like to down people, uh, manufacturers, over little mistakes like that because I know that it costs a lot of money. To have tooling and overhead and employees and all that other stuff so I mean yes this is a very good product uh, very detailed um, would I buy another one yes I mean I'm not gonna let something that glue could fix steer me away from something like this I just you know a little attention to detail like that you know never hurt anybody but anyway moving on um, I, I don't know who makes these or what actual nomenclature this car has, but I found a few of these and I like them a lot because <laughs> I, I don't, you don't usually see these around where I live. Um, it's a bulkhead flat car, but it's got these stake side pockets on it, or well, they're not stake pockets. I think they fold down these, uh, these bars that go across here. But um, it's just a regular trailer train flat car, and it came in uh, non-matching numbers. A little focus can't hurt. Um, this thing's really sweet, but it's got it's got no weight to it. So uh, I'm gonna have to think of a clever load for this to uh, weight the car down to a, a NMRA standard. Because um, I actually cheated and I tried to run these before I filmed this, and uh, they uh, they don't like. Uh, tight curves without weight on them so uh, we'll get some loads situated for these and we'll weather them up and um, it'll be awesome um, another um, more expensive purchase that I made is a uh, Spring Mills Depot um, can stock car um, these can stock cars are cool um, although the product the model doesn't actually display it um, this particular B&O can stock car had a clear panel on the roof, so people who were loading it uh, could use sunlight um, to see inside the car. And um, these can stock cars, again, this one came with an ACI tag as well. The uh, door is offset on both sides to the rear, and I, my understanding is that they load coil steel in these for cans, for can making, like for canned soup and whatnot. And uh, I guess it's just easier to have the door openings on one side so the forklift can come in and then pack up all the stock over here. I don't know, I'm not a freight car expert. I just know what I like. And uh, the Spring Mills Depot car is, is really nice. I mean, it's got all the different brake pipes and brake lines and different things. And it's got... Really sturdy uh, air airlines on the end, which I'll probably manage to break anyway. But um, this car is uh, like um, probably late seventies, so this will get weathering, but not much. Just you know, I'll rust up the wheels and trucks and a little bit of rusty and spray and whatever. You know how I do. Just like to throw it on there. If it's not good enough, give her more. Bigger the gob, better the job. But, uh, so yeah, that's my can stock box car. There's, uh, these came in a whole bunch of different numbers. And there's two other 
cars that Spring Mills Depot has. Um, one of them's got like a little bowling ball picture over here, and it says something about roller freight or something. I don't know. I, this is the only one that had the uh, roof clear roof panel, so that's why I got this one because, you know, I I like to uh, have different different cars and whatnot. Anyway, so moving on. Last but not least. Uh, this is something that I've been looking for for a while, and uh, anybody who knows Providence and Worcester knows that they got rid of these uh, pretty recently. I've actually seen these run around a few times down in uh, the Portland area on the Middletown branch, and uh, I I, oh, I, th I like all you know B units, slugs, road slugs, TR, you, all, whatever all those random things are. I, I like stuff like that, oddball stuff, and uh, this is no exception. Um, this is actually a kit that you buy and you paint yourself. You can see it says B23 on there. It's a Dash 7. Um, you can tell it's a Dash 7 by this step right here in the long hood. But um, it's actually painted and decaled very, very well. Uh, the only problem is, is it came on a Bachman chassis that was uh, hacked up a little bit to fit under here. And uh, I, this is the wor one of the worst... Bachman atrocities that they designed in their laboratories or whatever and uh, basically the only thing I'm going to keep off this is the truck side frames uh, if possible. I'm going to try to make this a power. I actually pulled the motor out of here with its drive line because it, it was not even worth putting a decoder into. I'd be stuck trying to speed match a crappy Bachman motor from all my other engines and it's just easier to dummy stuff temporarily until I can find a better uh, powered chassis for this. Maybe I can find a nice Atlas Cotto or something like that and and uh, just shorten it up to fit under there. But the uh, the unit as a whole, I mean, looks really nice considering. I mean, it's got all of its grab irons and oh, you probably can't see that, but it's got all of its grab irons and number boards are all nice. I mean, it's it's really nice. So, you know, it is what it is for what I... For what I got, if that makes any sense at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff on the track, and uh, we'll get you a run by going, and uh, we'll have fun playing with trains in the basement for a while. So um, we'll get that going. Also, another thing too, uh, which will be I guess next before the run by. I also bought, jeez, oh somewhere in the vicinity of 80 VHS tapes. Um, home rail fan tapes, uh, purchased uh, tapes, you know, like, uh, not Green Frog Productions, but there's some other ones in there that are, that were popular. Um, I'll give you guys a peek into all those tapes that I bought, too. So, uh, stay tuned, uh, stand by, whatever you need to do, get yourself some coffee or make a potty run, and I'll be right back. And lastly, but definitely not the least of things that I got, um, definitely something I wasn't expecting to find, let alone buy about 80 of, is uh, VHS tapes. Uh, I still have a couple VCRs, so I really uh, don't mind watching VHSs. I actually enjoy it. But um, it just didn't really, you know, I didn't think I was going to buy 80 of them. I think there's like 84 in there, but... Um, a lot of them, probably about half of them, are somebody's home videos of around the uh, southern New England area, like Massachusetts, northern Connecticut. There's some southern Connecticut in there, too, like around the northeast corridor. And um, and then the box on the right is uh, probably more like a lot of, I don't want to use the term generic, but videos that you could buy, like at train shows that are, you know, mass produced, I guess we'll use that. They're definitely not home movies. Um, so I'm just going to go through the box real quick and I'll read off a couple and then that'll be it for this video. So, um, we got CSX along the Selkirk branch. Yeah, there's going to be, there you go. Um, that's like Broken Knuckle Video Productions. Um, this is a good one I've seen that's been on DVD now and I, I, don't really do DVDs. I don't mind having VHS though, so this one will probably get a good watch. The Rivals. Uh, Northeast Rails 2000, 2002. That's probably a good one. Um, 
There's also some home recorded ones in here too. I'm not quite sure what those came from. Um, some of these I'll probably never watch, like trains on location, Wisconsin Central. Yeah, probably not something I watch, but who knows. Northeast Rails, 1995 to 1999. That's pretty much right when I first started watching trains as a kid, so I'm sure that'll be a good one. Um, I don't know, there's all kinds of different stuff in here. New York and Atlantic. Milwaukee's Mighty Electrics. Huh. I don't, that'll probably be a fun watch, why not? Um, and also there's like a video series. Um, here's one of them. There's, there's a whole bunch in the series. I think there's like nine or ten in the volume. Or there's nine or ten volumes in the series of, it says Providence and Worcester Action by GZB Video Productions. So I'm sure that's going to be exciting. Um, and then there's all the home movies. New England, 1994, Providence and Worcester, Amtrak Service. It seems to be a lot of mid-90s to early 2000s. Club Show Providence. Uh, I can't really read some of the handwriting, unfortunately. Providence and Worcester, 2003, Part 2, CSX. NR2, CT1. Empty Coal, Loaded Coal, Worcester Grotten, 1993. Some of them actually are specifically dated. I don't know if you can see that, but... So, probably... Yeah, and this box is too... Whoops. It's probably really loud. Hope you're not wearing headphones. The box is too deep of tapes. And, I mean, some of them aren't even labeled on the outside. But, and they're in cursive, too. So, everybody's cursive is interpretive. June and July, 1996, Providence and Worcester, Passenger Train. I don't know, there's all kind of stuff like that. Um, a lot of Providence and Worcester, which is perfectly all right with me. Cab Ride, Groton and Worcester, that's probably going to be a good one. Um, so probably Cab Ride, Groton to Worcester. Yeah. Cab Ride, Groton, yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyway, so over the next rest of my life, I guess, I'll be previewing all of these tapes, and I'll probably upload clips of whatever I think is really noteworthy. Right off the bat, here's another one I didn't see. Incredible Alcos, Volume 1. I'll probably be watching that. Gator Dye Supplies. Hmm, never heard of it. Looks like somebody taped over a tape with something else. There's probably a bunch of that in there, but... That's what you get when you pay, like, you know, like 50 cents a tape or whatever. I didn't ask questions. I didn't even look through most of them. I just bought it. So, thanks for watching.